Morning everybody, um, we've just come out the bridge in, so we are down near Clevedon, Bristol and we're going to Acorn, it's another uh, Ace of Acorn qualifier, it's our third one actually, we failed once on peg 12 didn't we, that peg hasn't really thrown up anything since I've been on it actually, if you, for quite a few weeks now it's been quite poor, um, uh, uh, peg 10 the other week which I really fancied, um, it, just, it was very very slow, I've had 90 odd pound. Uh, which sounds all right, but I was really having to wait on bites. Um, so we're down here again, third time. Um, it's warmed up, hasn't it? It's been mild all week. We're now in April, so we're back on the sort of carp. We finished our sort of silvers campaign through the winter, if you like. So you won't see much more silvers fishing for, for, from me now, not, not during the warmer months. It's got to be carp, hasn't it? So hoping for a few down the edge of that the day, which would be nice. Our first sort of edge fish this year. That would be fantastic. Uh, so let's get down Acorn and see where we draw. little start wasn't it I was actually going to go across the start with if I'm honest but um, Gareth could make Gareth on the right on peg one which is like the end peg and it goes back around a corner he actually went straight down his edge and had a 12 pounder first put in and then had a, another one about 10 pound I think afterwards so I had to have a quick look and um, and we managed to nab one so we've gone across now, um, but unfortunately we've hooked some sort of little, I don't know what you call it, is it streamer, it's some sort of weed, I don't know if it's streamer weed or what you call it, but it's on the boards, I've never seen this down here before, now it's down the inside, um, I d it should have occurred to me that it would be across as well, and I always fish tight to the boards, the fish like it tight to the boards, so um, yeah, we've had the replum over there, um, yeah, so we've got something on now, but we had to replumb back from the boards a little bit, but I'm still picking up odd little bits of that green, and you don't want to be going 16 metres, do you? Picking up little bits of weed. So a um, bit of a lesson learned there already for next week. Next weekend is the first of the Spring League down here, um, hence why we're here today. But this is an acorn, ace of acorn, I should say, qualifier anyway, so didn't mind coming down. Weather has been good, so it's sort of proper carp fishing again now, isn't it? That was a nice F1 we had there across. Um, decent fish, but we really want carp, of course. But they're quality F1s. There's not that many left in here now, but when you get one, they're sort of anything from two and a half, I'd say a sort of four and a half pound. A great fish. Managed to nab another one down the edge. 
I had to give it quite a little rest mind and then just went down around had the one and um, we've changed elastics recently we're, we're, we're back on the hybrid I mean I've always used hollows and I'm trying to get used to these hybrids they last so much longer don't they um, so economically they're, they're they make sense you know fish is expensive and um, so I'm using Dave Wilmot's hybrid elastic uh, really reasonably priced so back across um, and I'm regretting not cleaning that across like I say up so we're off the boards and as you see it ain't really happening to be honest so back down the edge and as you just seen we just loaded Tom fix edge mix that's all we got there nothing fancy no fish mill no expander no nothing like that in there flicking a few maggots on our top kit plus short four line in front as well there just off to the left of the keep nets um, same length as we are at our edge just makes things simple doesn't it fishing two lines the same length totally different depths but same lengths just make it easy I can feed accurately at that length while going round to my edge and you remember that length when it's not there then to throw your maggots so you know you're a little bit more accurate so it certainly is a bit warmer isn't it I mean we've been giving it sort of you know a good 10 12 minutes rest every time um, trying to catch somewhere different but nipping down that edge is is putting some fish in the net early and it look I'm looking around and we're doing all right no one's right apart from Gareth on the right he, he's had a great run down to that little uh, as I say that sort of corner on his right he hasn't caught anything towards me on the left but just to the right so cross was pretty poor so we've gone over where we've dumped all those maggots down the middle and you can get a lot of there's some quality bream in here a lot of skimmers there's bream in here at the four pound and tench and the tench go big like at the six pound um, so I'm having a look to see if there's lots of them there with an odd carp and such we need to catch somewhere else to give that ed edge a rest I really would like to try and get two lines where I can catch but this tench don't feel that big to be honest so we're still still trying to find a bit of consistency in the peg you know still trying to work it out a bit the line down the middle we're fishing um, just 016 main line um, but we are on a 014 hook length now and a size 18808 double maggot white hydro look fairly robust we can certainly we can get carp out taking our time with that that's a slightly better tench not the sort of stamp we wanted but better so it didn't really happen after those couple of tents we we're just waiting too long although there is a few bubbles in that there so i just refed it with more maggots and again just gave that edge that rest nip down there i'm not expecting this edge to keep doing this all day mind but i think we get away with it for you know as long as they'll come and then we might have to wait till carp o'clock carp o'clock is always that last sort of hour in the hour and a half we're back on um, summer times again today so we're fishing a six hour match so that's a bit different again I've been used to a lot of um, five hour matches and it's a full house as well so Chris will be paying top five top five framers no sections and I think he pays one or two in the silvers as well but we're not really interested in that because we're trying to gain a little bit of knowledge for the spring league next week so another nice carp from down the edge once you manage two on the trot then look it's very handy then so we're just potting in that tom fix nice and damp you can see the, the cad pot on top a um, few maggots in the bottom then then the ground bait on the top i feel doing that with hose in the pot you must have hose in the pot dunking it under the water nice and gently lifting the pole up gently and those maggots help just push that ground bait down goes down in a nice little column and then you just lower your hook bait down in amongst it fishing two double maggot at the moment double maggot on a 16 
uh, 9-11. Oh, 16 hook length. So trying to get this across working again. So I didn't feel that deep lines right. So we've gone back across and I've actually plumbed further away again. Um, and I've just put a bit of tape on that section that's in front of my front hand. then a bit better run of fish but i do feel there's a big lesson learned for next week is to get over on the island and um you know get on those boards and, and, and scrape a bit of weed away so as i can get that rig in tight to the boards if you get it in tight to the boards it goes up that little bit steps up a little bit shallower and you just catch more carp we're catching a lot of Carasio's F1, smaller carp. I'm happy enough with that. You know, all you've got to do with these matches is keep putting something in the net. Um, and you'll always be there and thereabouts. It's when you've got long lulls of doing nothing, you know, you, you start to fall away a bit. But just feel we missed a trick there. But as I say, it's something learned for next week. So uh, not all bad. And the kit across. Um, so it's 018 main line uh the reason it's 018 if it wasn't 018 i'd be making it 2.0 now just for the simple reason that fishing quite a short rig at a distance it can tangle easy the the thicker main line you got easy the less chance of tangles and if it does tangle the easier it is to undo it and that really is the logic behind that the hook life itself that is quite light but i've always been a bit like that across for me it's always about getting the bite and when they you get the bite getting them to hold on long enough to be able to lift that pole and hit them um and the acorn they are sly when they're across there so for me that's 012 um size 20 the old guru lwg ptfe jobbies um and um yeah just a micro band and four mil pellets that's what we're catching on hard four mil pellets cad pot and a few four mils as well not many cad pot and a few too many earlier um now we're cad potting probably only about eight pellets and then just lowering the hook bait down with them nice and slow and that seems to be working quite well for the moment i don't think it's i think being away from the boards it won't keep up but that's all right we just want to run a fish then try and nab one down the edge run a fish across nab one down the edge repeat the process isn't it gareth's actually still catching big fish down to his right hand edge he's caught a few across as well a good angle gareth he's he, and he you know but um that edge on the right hand side uh, we're a couple of hours in and I'm thinking I can't see anybody beating in the day he's a good angler and he's on the right peg and I just think the writing's on the wall with that 
but that won't stop us trying, mind. So a few more maggots on that short line. Don't ignore that. Just keep going with that. As we said, this is our sort of third chance of qualifying. That peg 12 we had was, um, it had sort of been a hot peg up until about a week or two weeks before I had it. Um, and then I had it, we had, I can't remember what we had now. Um, I did do a video on it. I think we had about 48 pounds. It was going back in the colder months. Um, but it's done nothing since. It's just been um, quite poor. Uh, so um, but then we have peg 10, the next match. And I do feel we left some in the peg. We had 90 odd pound. It was one with 125 pound. Uh, Martin Ray at won it on peg 25. He actually named the peg he wanted as well. Oh, don't you just hate that? <laughs> and uh, so he named 25, won it there, won it with 125 pound. But um, I made some errors. I waited on bikes for a long time, tried to cross, and it was just dire or nothing. And uh, it was quite windy, and I sort of give up on that. And then the wind dropped with about an hour and a half to go. And um, I thought that last sort of hour and a half, we're going to catch on our short lines, etc. Never happened. And we just waited too long thinking it was going to happen. And it didn't. I didn't get one fish on my short maggot line. Didn't get one fish down the edge. Um, and then with half an hour to go, I've gone across. And within 30 seconds, the float's gone. And I couldn't get in there fast enough the last half an hour. And I just felt that peg that day was capable of winning that match. So that was a bit of a gutter, really. I think that that was an opportunity slipped. So we don't want to do that too many times. But, I, I, you know, this match is to get us in tune with it a little bit. Um, and it has warmed up a little bit. Slightly different fishing now. You know, you've got to, you've got to be honest about your fishing. If you didn't do as well as you think you should have or what the pegs were, if you, you have to put your hands up to yourself push yourself on the you know get a, you know do better next time so we've actually hooked one on the short line so we had a skimmer on it and now we've got something a little bit better it don't feel quite properly hooked to be honest Tackle on this line, um, because we didn't catch anything on the short maggot line in 10, I'm being a little bit cautious with it. So um, we're not fishing too heavy, but not too light at the same time. So sort of 014 hook length, um, same as we were in the deeper water, wasn't it? Um, with the 18808, but we've got a slightly stronger elastic. Rather than white, we got some grey hydro. Oh, and that port, that came off, it wasn't, it wasn't in the mouth. So we've come off that, threw a few more maggots on it. We've had a skimmer, foul hooked a carp. That line isn't quite ready, but it was promising to see a couple of fish on it. So frustratingly, nothing down the edge, so we've had to go back across. I say frustratingly, because I'm looking around and quite a few people now are catching down their edges and on their short lines. Now the wind is coming off our back a bit. Um, and quite a few people got ripple but pegs one to five are on like the island and this straight bit in front of us is flat now gareth is fishing to his right so he's got a bit of ripple coming down around the corner on one as peg five has on the other end which is a very very good peg um so yeah but you you can't worry about those things you just gotta think fish my peg keep trying to put in the net you know you can sit there because i could sit there doing exactly the same as others and not catch and that's just just pointless you, you've you've got to fish your own peg i love this sort of fishing anyways it's, it's awesome isn't it some people love snake lakes, some people hate them, I love them. As you can see, a few four mils in there. 
out the cow pot and then very gently we slowly lift there you go and that that pellet then as we were lowering it down didn't get to the bottom that's probably three four inches off the bottom then and he had it And with that white hydro and just lifting into bites or letting them hook themselves like that one obviously did um they're not too aggressive swimming out of that shallow water across you don't want them to disturb every other fish in the peg you know it's right fishing heavy elastic and oh look at me i landed it really fast but then you'll be just waiting longer for the next one it's all about getting the bite Be another big crassy of this, I'm not sure. Getting some bites across there though, which is alright, but I'm watching people catching bigger fish down the edges. But as I said, you just gotta fish your own peg. And it's lovely fishing. Yeah, crassio. They certainly put on some weight down here now. That's a couple of pounds. I can't believe that short maggot line hasn't come good at all again, but I shan't give up on it. So we're starting to get one or two down the edge now. It's brilliant. Um, it isn't as, you know, cut it quite a bit of film. We are having to wait on them a bit, but um, yeah, they're a bit strange. You go in, sometimes you'll get one straight away, and another time you're sort of waiting quite a quite a while. Um, tip being used down the edge, as we mentioned, um, is 0.4 Malman Elko. Love those floats. Um, and then we've that they hold about I think underneath that one I've probably got five number eights and a number ten and that leaves me with about four mil of bristle left above the water 
and the bikes on the maggots down the edge, some of them can be tiny. I mean, the dinks are absolutely tiny. You think it's like roach or something. You've got to have a go at everything. You see it dink, and you go at it, and it's normally a carp. Um, so, and that's all just bolt down above, above a four-inch hook length. Dead simple. 016, 16911, as I say at the moment. Coupled with Dave's hybrid green elastic is absolutely fine. In the real warmer months, maybe towards the end of the spring league, the middle of the spring league, I may well be looking at stepping the elastic up a grade and looking at 018 and, and a more robust hook. But at the moment, um, this is fine. And we've just got one from the right. That's our first cart from the right. If you've seen just now, we actually had a little eel down there. I couldn't believe it. The edges with the grain bait it's just about putting in the right amount of grain bait the frequency of it um how you mix the grain bait and how it comes out of the pot and goes down it's a bit like fishing a method feeder really you're looking for that little bit of grain bait to go in like a little uh, little blob if you like and then you lower your hook bait down with it and it's a bit like a method feeder as i say if a fish comes in lines you disturbs it or anything else you've got to start again really it's a bit like fishing a method you know if you had a big line or moved your feeder you you'd redo it I'll, I'll try and do a video at some stage um with us actually filming it like a pleasure one filming it down the edge and how we feed it and all the rest of it and um, show you in a little bit more detail
uh, just when I thought we were coming back strong, our peg completely died. We got like an hour hour to go, and we've had two carp in the last in the forty first forty minutes of that last hour. We got like just over well about tw twenty two minutes ago now. I've gone down to the edge, and this don't feel like a carp. No, it's a small tench. It's not ideal, is it? but welcome fish that that's that's the second one we've had down that right hand side that's all we've had down there gareth has actually fished to his left towards me as well and not had one everything he's had has been on the right so yeah three fish in just over 40 minutes in the last hour we really expected it to come on strong but yeah i don't know it's not the best peg as i say but um the temperatures dropped considerably as well you know it got really cold in the last hour the wind look I'm, I'm pleased i had it off me back to be honest Dropped on the short maggot line with 15 minutes to go. And uh, the float move, we had a sign and then we've had a proper bite. Unbelievable, isn't it? And we tried it 10 minutes ago, nothing. And then all of a sudden. Uh, it feels properly hooked. Small but welcome. drop that in it settled and it went straight away it's what i say about this maggot like you can never give up on that line really it's three foot i got there and i'm using a 4b12 rube five number nine strung out quite positive really but this one's a little bit bigger not massive a little bit bigger but they are pulling a bit and I think um, I think next week we will step it up a little bit to 016. I'm saying that it's meant to be going a bit cooler in the week so we'll have to see what, what we think conditions wise in a week's time is. He's not much bigger, is he? Just feisty. Yeah, certainly on that line now. I can't really believe how much that uh, temperature has dropped. It really is like that at the moment, isn't it? Must have dropped five, eight, five, maybe even six degrees. Incredible. be that drop in temperature um, has affected my peg and those edges and those fish have just dropped down a little bit deeper um, but they do look to be a smaller stamp so I don't know I, you know might not be it's not the same fish as we were catching down the edge is it so I, I'm not too sure but the edges have definitely gone can't complain though because we caught a few down there so early didn't we in the match 
been a cracking day's fishing. Can't wait for next week. Learned quite a little bit, actually. A few little mistakes. But um, we've done all right. Um, we'll see what we weigh in a minute. Gareth, Gareth will have won the match. Gareth on peg one. He's, he's absolutely romped it. But um, as I say, Chris pays top five. So let's see. Uh, let's see where we are. So we ended up in the last 15 minutes, we caught six on that line, on that shore of packet line. So unbelievable, wasn't it? Nothing all day. And then we had half a dozen just like that. Thanks for watching, everybody. Stay tuned. Do, do stay to see the results. And tune in next week when we fish the league. Thanks for watching, everyone. Mm -hmm.